heart rate, temperature, steps, diet. These days, we can track all of our vitals. All of this data can help us to understand and tweak our lifestyles, but it's also moved way beyond the basics, allowing smartphone connected devices to monitor conditions like asthma or diabetes from home. Laura Lewington has been to meet someone who's using something a little bit more advanced than a smartwatch to monitor his health. He's had a tiny computer inserted into his heart. Around 26 million people worldwide are suffering from heart failure, where the heart is struggling to pump blood around the body. For some time now, technology has been used to keep track of heart conditions. So I've come here to Hammersmith Hospital where an innovative procedure is being carried out. 71-year-old retiree Andrew lives with heart failure, requiring precise medication to keep him well. What's stopping you? Is it breathlessness or pain in the chest or...? Well, it's breathlessness, but it's not like a fit person's breathlessness. Yeah. I was having a monthly appointment with consultants. And, of course, with walking, it's always a problem because wards are quite a long way apart. You can walk 15 yards and then I have to pause and gather breath. Today, though, Andrew's having a tiny microcomputer inserted into his heart. What we want to offer you is a device that will sit just on here that's able to monitor the pressure in the left atrium. It'll give doctors access to continuous data, so any changes to his condition could trigger an alert. Getting prior warning would keep me out of hospital and would mean I could be treated at home. This is the second procedure of its kind in the UK. Up until now, we've never been able to get this data um, in a patient who's not in an operating theatre with a catheter positioned in, in the heart. So this is potentially a major step forward. Um, means that we can adjust the medication at an early stage, which um, reduces um, uh, symptoms um, and critically reduces admissions to hospital. The device is threaded through the veins into the heart. Once in place, its wings will open, securing a sensor inside the left atrium and the really cutting edge bit, a microcomputer in the right. To reduce the size of uh, the implant, we develop a proprietary technology that enables digital transmission of the data without a battery. It charges a bit like a phone with a wireless charger. The belt powers the device as well as sucking the data from it so it can be sent to the cloud. From there, AI algorithms interpret the readings to flag if a doctor needs to take action. The more data we will gather throughout the time, the better the, our AI-based system will be. <laughs> Finally, it's time for Andrew to go into surgery. Doctors use ultrasound probes and X-ray vision to see inside his body. Equipment is fed through his veins and a central wall in Andrew's heart is pierced so the device can be put in place. This is usually the riskiest part of the procedure. So the device is now going into the heart. Fortunately for Andrew, all goes to plan, as this is the only way to get data directly from the left atrium. The device has now been released from the catheter and is sitting uh, on the septum. You can see the two sides of the umbrella of the device are attached either side of the septum to secure the anchor it in. The procedure has gone very nicely, it's a perfect result. A month after the operation, we met to look at the data that had been collected and how useful it seemed. These look like perfect traces, like the traces we would see if we had an invasive catheter um, at the time of a, um, of a procedure. So this, th this is very, very good quality data. What does this mean for the data that you're looking at long term? We will be able to see um, changes within the pressure um, in Andrew's heart. And this is likely to be before he develops symptoms. 
so that we can adjust his medication to try and prevent worsening of his symptoms and that way we will be able to um, keep Andrew as he is now, nice and stable. How has this changed your life? Emotionally it has, in, in that I, I can see a future now. I, I felt I'd just been put in a filing cabinet just waiting for something nasty to happen, but now there's um, possibilities of further treatment. What would you say to anybody else in a similar situation to you about the trial and what you've experienced so far? Consider it. I, I think it will improve their life.